Uh, hey everyone, it's Tuesday, June 6th. Happy birthday to my daughter, wherever you are. I know you're not watching this recording, but happy birthday to you anyway. Um, yeah, so I hope everybody's having a good day. We have the minutes are in the chat. And as always, just want to quick remind everybody um, that this is under the Chaos Code of Conduct. So keep that in mind. And we do not care if you have your cameras on or off. We're happy to integrate your chat in the flow of the meeting. It's super casual here. Make sure I turn on captions. There we go. Share. There we go. Here it is. And if you would like to add your name, I think everybody has, or most people have, um, and tell us if you'd rather watch a sport or play a sport. And that is a little bit of a trick question because it probably does depend on the sport. In my case, mini golf, yes. We were talking about the mini golf technology and how far it's come. So I feel like I want to Google that and go down that rabbit hole a little bit later on today. Uh, yeah, Kevin, yes, depends on the sport, 100%. You can watch mini golf too, you know, there's a TV show. What, really? Holy moly. That show is phenomenal, by the way. Really? Yeah. <laughs> wow, is it on like ESPN, like 12? Oh, it's, like, it's on ABC, or just one of the main channels. And I think it's, it's a summer oh. show, so it should be starting soon. So. I'll keep you posted. <laughs> Please do, because I don't have network TV, so I would love that. Is it on maybe old reruns or on YouTube or something? I don't know. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I'm definitely going to go down that rabbit hole now. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate you. Um, okay, so first, um, this was a carryover from last week when we had a super light crowd because <laughs> it was a short week um, for some. And yeah, people were on vacation and stuff. Uh, we just were curious who's going to Fosse. If you're going, um, I don't know, maybe put it in here or something. I'm not sure. I'll be there. I just got a talk accepted. So I'll be talking about getting more contributors for your project. A piece of it will be metrics. There's a section on metrics. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Justin Flory and I are also going to give a talk there. We got a, we had submitted a joint talk about um, newcomer experience and how you have to do a little more than just have contributing.md. So um, we're going to talk about some stuff that they're doing in Fedora and some stuff we do here. So that's on the DEI track. Don, what track is yours on? Is it on DEI or? Uh, no, it's in the community track. Community. Awesome. Um, we are also having a booth at Fosse. Yay. Um, I think it's our first time having a booth somewhere, right? I feel like Georg has run like a Grimoire Lab booth has been the closest we've ever come Gosh. as chaos stickers at it. So um, I was planning to be there anyway to staff the booth, but now that I'm going to give a talk also, I'm, again, more than happy to staff the booth as, for as many hours as possible. Um, if anybody is there, Don or Sophia, whoever, um, and wants to take a little booth time, I can set up like a sign up sheet or something and we can split it up a little bit. But I'm I'm more than happy to kind of bear the bulk of that, um, that kind of burden because it does get a little, uh, I mean, I've done booths a lot, so I don't mind, you know, chatting with people. It's totally fine. But I know it's for some, it's a little overwhelming. So um, what I wanted to ask the community is, what do you think we need to that's oh that's what i was just gonna ask are you typing that matt i am ah i was just gonna ask that what do you all think we need um i was gonna i have in the past printed stuff banners um for other organizations for user groups and things where i've done booths so i know where to get it pretty cheaply at a pretty good quality um so i was gonna offer to do that part just get a big banner printed but I didn't know stickers is also something I was going to think about. Um, Ruth, let me know that ChaosCon Africa, they have ha had some um, chaotic stickers made. They're the design team for that. So she sent me the PNG. I was going to get some of those printed, which would be awesome. That's yeah, and I think all of those, like, that seems like a really easy thing to get reimbursed through. Okay as well i can't imagine a banner is 
I can't, none of this stuff is hugely expensive. Yeah, uh -uh. I would imagine like a couple hundred bucks could take care of most of it. Well, in the um, banner I read there, they like have pretty strict guidelines on what you can bring and what you can't bring in. And so we would end up reusing that anyway, you know. Yeah, yeah. It would be nice to have, even just for our other events. I wouldn't for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm also hoping, I, I reached out to All Things Open as well to see, because they have, um, project nonprofit ish kind of booths available as well. So I think we hopefully will have a booth there too. Um, Why yeah. don't you just order what you need and then we can just do a reimbursement, whether it's for LFX or um, like the slow and stuff. Okay. Um, I think it's worth asking Georg too, if we have anything that we can reuse from uh, um, some of the other stuff that we've done, because I know, I think we've done chaos booths at Bosdam before, maybe. I think you might be right, like a table. I think you're yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I wonder yeah. if we have any banners or tablecloths or anything left over from those. I'll send them in the moment now. Yeah, great idea. Great idea. Um, I'll also, I will set up a sign up um, thing in case anybody does want to grab some time. It's not a big deal if you don't. Um, I, I mean, you know, it's not a big deal. Um, worst case is I'm giving a talk. There's nobody at the booth for, uh, you know, half an hour or whatever. It's it's okay. <laughs> it's all right. Um, okay. Anything else that somebody's seen? Like, do you all think we should do like a raffle or like any of that kind of stuff? I don't know how complicated we want to make things. I'm happy to not do any of that, but I'm also, if, if people are passionate, they feel like we should be doing something like that. Um, I'm I, like that idea. I don't know that we've ever talked about that ever, but. Like, you know, where you like collect a business card or whatever. I don't know. It seems like a lot of work, but um, again, I'm super happy to do it. Totally fine. What would we raffle off? I don't know. Whatever you guys want. I guess I, I'm not sure what the like incentive for us to do that either is beyond making it fun in the sense that like we don't really want to collect people's names and interest forms. Like I think in other booths, it's like you have these sort of games to get people to engage with you more so you can get their contact info and follow up with them and marketing material. And we're not really doing that. Um, but if we did have something we wanted people to participate in, then we could have a raffle as part of that. Um, I guess my my personal inclination, this is definitely my own biases, is like I love to do stuff, stuff like that for like a research project where you answer a question and then you enter a raffle by, because then like there is some give and take where like you get a prize maybe and we get to collect data around how people answer this one question. But yeah. if, we have, if we have one, uh, if we don't have one, then we don't have to worry about it. But I think that's generally like, I don't know, because like we, we're not really interested in making a mailing list so yeah i think but we might be interested in answering a question yeah, i think the i think the purpose on our end is to uh kind of generate conversation so i'm, I'm wondering if we could create maybe a couple kind of one sheeters or some graphics that would uh, uh kind of encourage discussion at the table and then I, I'm wondering if we if we want to kind of engage with them, maybe like a short one page survey. How healthy is your project? Like non academic survey, just a just how healthy is your project kind of form that they could fill out or something. Just to get people thinking about uh, maybe how their how some of our metrics are applicable to their projects or communities. I suppose we could we could use it as a scientific survey, I suppose, but uh, I, I don't know, it's more more anecdotal, I suppose. But I, I think that that could still be valuable too. Like I we don't really know yeah. who's going to show up to this space, and I don't know it, it is always an opportunity to learn, even if it's not particularly scientifically rigorous. At the, at the very least, it gets people kind of talking and thinking about it. So maybe that. Um, starter project metrics model, we could just do like a thing, like, have you considered these 
metrics in your project or something like that. Yeah, maybe just uh, just like a one sheet form that yeah. they, they can turn in to us if they want, or uh, if not, they can take it and think about it. And that's where the metrics are at. I, yeah, I'd be curious to know what people are measuring right now. Like, do you measure anything in your community? And if so, like, what, what do you measure? I, I think that'd be kind of interesting. I like that. That's short and simple. I, I, um, I think the only, the only benefit to, to collecting those business cards is if we did have folks that were in OSPOs or in, you know, the scientific community or um, universities, we could kind of point them to our, our context working groups. Um, but again, that's going to be like a lot of work, I think, to like sift through all that and then like, you know. You can just invite them on the spot. That's, yeah. Yeah. Do you measure in anything? In your community currently, um, business or stuff. Well, this is not until July, so we do have a little time. So, you know, if, if folks want to give it a little thought, and if there's something they think that would be beneficial to chaos and our metrics, then yeah, we let we us know. what's that? Can we raffle off something? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm always down based, for a raffle. Based on the survey one sheet, that would be the, uh, that would be how you uh, sign yep. up for the raffle. Yep. I mean, I feel like this is maybe, I don't know what you have left in the like swag bags, but like leftover stuff we've gotten for other events and maybe like the lunch boxes or t-shirts. Matt, I don't know if you have extras. Um, ships might not be incentive enough, but like people generally like t-shirts and want, like things. So hopefully you won't have to get new things, but if you have like five or six things that we could just wrap up. I've been off. pushing for a plushy snake as our chaos <laughs> mascot forever because of the two S's. Yes. So we could go to Etsy and have somebody like embroider chaos on a snake. <laughs> I mean, I, yes, because I think that like, well, I know when in the PHP community, they they do the elephants, right? Like, so every event has its own elephant, every user group, like there's all different colors, you collect them, like it's a thing. And so I could look into who makes those because they do have like the PHP logo, like they were designed for the PHP community and they have like the logo on the side and they all have all different colors. And it's like the Susie thing, like somehow yeah. they have a thing, a blizzard thing. <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, that's a whole like can of worms though. <laughs> like that's a whole other thing. So I'm, I think that might take some, some doing. <laughs> I don't know if we can get that done by July, I guess is what I'm trying to say, but. Buy uh, a snake and like a plush <laughs> snake and put a sticker on it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not a sticker, maybe like a little necktie. Sort <laughs> <laughs> yeah. of like put a sticker on a plushie, but if you get a necktie, it says chaos. Yeah. A flag. Yeah. A little bow. <laughs> okay, we'll think about swag and raffle giveaways. Okay. Yeah, see, that's the fun stuff I really like to do. I think it's so fun. Oh, can somebody drop the? Oh, I can drop it in here. Never mind. I have it open for delight. There you go, my friend. Um, anything else about Fosse? We we want to chat about. Oh, here's my daughter calling me now. Does she not know? I have the I have a meeting same time every every week. It's okay. She calls me a lot. It's okay. Um, and now I feel bad because I re I declined her call on her birthday. Don't yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it'd be a little rude, I guess, to be like, okay, hang on, guys. I'm just gonna take this. No worries. Um, anyway, um, I digress. Uh, so it, the, for those who haven't heard, Chaos Con Africa is happening next week super soon and here is the schedule I want to give a quick shout out to justin flory who is doing the first keynote and anita who is doing the second keynote and there are some excellent topics here i'm so excited for this um this is also going to be live streamed so if you want to watch we're going to do it through the chaos youtube channel which is, I think, a first for us. So we'll see how that goes. 
Mary Blessing, you're on the call. Is there anything you want to tell us about this? I know I have to add some stuff to the website, which I will do today um, on speaker bios and all of that. Um, but if you want to, I don't, I'm not to put you on the spot either. So, so if there's nothing else to add, um, that's totally fine too. Yeah, you're a, you're a little choppy for me. I don't know if you're choppy. Okay. Um, I mean, um, the update that we have. So, um, yeah, and you've already said everything is going to be live streamed. And, you know, we have amazing keynotes and amazing um, talks, lightning talks as well. Um, also, Sean will be joining us uh, virtually to give a talk on Augur as well, and um, um, Lewis, yeah, to give a talk on um, Grimoire Lab. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, it's going to be an amazing event, and um, we are all super pumped for it. <laughs> uh, my favorite part of the whole schedule is this, that you, like, put in for games. I love that. I love that. I want, I love it so much. I love when things are fun. Because I think it just kind of is a great way to end the day and have people bond with each other and just like relax a little bit. So I love that. And there's so much going on here with workshops and lightning talks and discussions. Like I'm just super, super excited for you all to have this uh, happening so soon. I know it's stressful <laughs> for this uh, this group of folks right here. <laughs> They're a little bit stressed out, I think, but um, it's going to be great. And I'm really excited for you. Is there anything that you need from the rest of the chaos community to kind of make this happen or support you? Like, how can we support you? I guess is my question. And that's to you, Mary Blessing, but you are kind of, and you're muted, but you also look like you might be frozen. Wait, I guess, I last. Yeah, I'll ask a few questions. One, is this a free event? Is that what the... It is not a free event. Um, there is a, a fee, but I know they have some um, diversity access tickets sure. that they've been handing out. Okay, cool. And then, um, is, like, does anybody have any sense of how many people are going to be there? That I don't know. That's a great question how many registrations we have so far. I'm not sure. We're curious just because our um, like chaos cons are typically, you know, like the ones we've run prior are in the 40 to 50 range. I'd just be super curious. Delay, do you happen to know or Busayo? Oh, Mary Blessings. Yeah. Hey, the, the budgets, I think the budget uh, was 100 persons. So. That was a budget, but I don't know how many have registered for the events or how many is going to be present there. That's, that information should be gotten from Roots. I think she's the one that knows. Or oh, there are some teams of guys that are, that are handling the registrations. So I think those guys also will have information about the registers, people that have registered there. Yeah. All right, cool. Thank you. Yeah, I think we I think we've done uh, around eighty at uh, Fosdom one year, and close to eighty at uh, in Vancouver one year as well. But I just wanted to say, just a note: uh, uh, one year we we did do the live streaming on YouTube uh, for I think it was one of the Fosdom Chaos. No, I'm sorry, it was uh, uh, I think it was the Seattle Chaos Con. Uh, so one thing to think about there is if you're going to have someone monitoring the uh, the comments in YouTube, or if uh, or if you want to create a, a Slack channel to to monitor those those comments, just uh, something to think about. Uh, so the uh, people online can uh, interact. 
Yes. So for to see the three cards, um, we'll be assigning um a person or two um to actually monitor comments from online, you know, to also our people streaming online to participate in activities going on um during the events. So, so yes, um, Excellent. So if I if I heard you correctly, I think you said you'll have a few volunteers who are going to monitor those comments, right? Okay. Um, Kevin, in your experience, was there any, were there any, um, what's the word I want, any considerations or any like pain points with streaming through the YouTube that um, the Chaos Africa folks might want to keep in mind? Uh, Just... ca camera placement was a little bit odd for us uh, because of the... Uh the nature of kind of webcams. Uh, I think we had ended up for that event. I think we had ended up putting the camera over to the uh, kind of the right side. So it wasn't necessarily a kind of a centralized uh, image. It, it worked okay, but it, it, uh, uh, the, the angle was a little bit odd. Uh, so and sometimes it could be hard to see the, uh, uh, the presentation, the PowerPoint presentations that that may have been occurring behind it. So just uh, think about think about the camera placement and make sure you have the the right stands and things to to get that in place. Was that was kind of a bit of a pain point for us? So uh, the room we were in was uh, it was not uh, it was kind of long in the wrong direction. So hopefully the room you're in is a little bit better. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Any other questions, comments on ChaosCon Africa? Good luck. Really. Yeah, it should it should be great. I'm super excited. And I can say that having done zero to it with this organ organizing it. So I'm not the one that's stressed out. I'm just doing the website. So <laughs> I'm super excited. I know you all are also, but I hope you're not um, over overworked, overstressed. So just let us know if we can support you in any way. We'll just leave it at that. Um, okay, ChaosCon North America videos were released to everybody on the Linux Foundation. Hopefully they don't have autoplay going here. No. Um, so these are open to anybody. If you didn't register, um, you can still access these, I guess. And so the link is in the minutes. If you want to watch, um, obviously they didn't record the small group discussions that happened offline, but um, yeah, the keynotes and talks are there. So I don't think we'll be able to post these on our YouTube. I think they'll have to stay here, but yeah, I know. I, I'm glad that they're, ours are first. <laughs> I think because we were the, what, the earlier one, I guess, one of the earliest ones. So yeah. Welcome to Chaos. Can we create a playlist that links to external videos? Mm. Is that possible? That's a really I good believe question. It is. I don't know. I can certainly look into that. That would be because we usually do a playlist for um, for our conferences. That would be perfect. It might involve maybe going and like liking or, or saving the uh, the video. Yeah, something. Linux Foundation using using the Chaos account. Yeah, we can maybe try that. I'll see what we can do there. Um. Okay. The next. Oh, sorry. Any questions about this? Any of this stuff? Awesome. Um, just a quick reminder, I, we mentioned it last week, but um, for folks who are here this week, the App Ecosystem Group, they are meeting today um, and they will meet through, I think they have one, one more meeting in June maybe, um, but then they are going to take a summer break in July and August and then they'll come back in September. So if you were planning on attending that meeting, um, you should do that today. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You should do it today and maybe in two weeks, um, but then you're, yeah, out of luck for a couple of a couple of months. 
Um, someone, I think is Matt, is typing that the science moved two hours earlier. Did we change the calendar in that? I, I thought so. Anyway, well, okay, delete that for a second then. I think we're okay. just looking at a time that's more um, like inclusive for folks in like, other parts of the world. Yeah, because I, I think we have someone from Australia that wants to join that group. Is that right? Yeah, and I think there's a pretty large contingent in Europe as well. I'm just sort of trying to find it. So I think we're looking at moving the time a little bit earlier. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, I will check that. Do you know if they landed on a time? I don't know. It's probably worth following up. I'm kind of picking up that thread because I think it was kind of going on last week while I was out. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, I was there, but I don't remember. Where, where <laughs> okay. So long ago. <laughs> so much has come into my ago. <laughs> Yeah. If something comes in, something goes out. So, yeah. Um, I can I can follow up with it though. Oh, that's probably a that's kind of that's a bit tricky because I think a lot of those the science folks are on the uh, Pacific time, which uh, does not match up well with Europe. No, I think they're at least having the discussion like in the channel, so mm -hmm. at least everybody. Is signing off on it. It okay. might just be an hour early. I kind of forget. Okay. Um, so I put in here what else? And I see someone put in a fun to know. This is cool. Who wants to talk about that? I added this mostly because I recently learned about it and figured anyone who regularly reports metrics should also be aware of it. And it's kind of a thing that we've all recognized and I say all, but most many of us have already recognized in our own experiences of the ability to influence by publishing. Um, but this is sort of a, someone else already coined the term. So I figured it would be nice to refer to it now if, if you would like to. So just a good to know. Yeah, we don't really have any I mean, we have our data use statement about eth the ethical use of the data itself, but we don't really have much in the way of like how m metrics can affect behaviors, how to mitigate that. Like we don't really give any guidance on that. And I don't know if that's outside of chaos's scope, but um, it seems like it would be helpful when implementing or, you know, helping folks implement some of the things. I've talked about it in like related talks before, um, but it's not really something that I've published. I think in the in the past we've we've tried to be fairly agnostic about it because there's we can't really control how people use metrics in the real world uh, on our end when we when we're we can we can try to define them in such a way that uh, you know they can't be gamed uh, but I don't uh, I I think that's a bit of a losing battle. <laughs> So I mean, we could we could think about it when we're defining it, but just the, the realization is once they're once they're out in the world, they're they're going to be gamed to a certain degree. So I, I think we kind of have to be a little agnostic about how they're used and just uh, kind of give our this is the this is our intent, right? Share our intent rather than uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm just wondering that if it maybe maybe it would even just be a blog post about some of the pitfalls or um, you know um, red flags or I don't know how we would want to call it, but just some some things to consider when implementing and just like general like here's this there's like you just said Kevin that people game metrics because I'm just thinking of folks that aren't experts in this field like if they are more software developers they're running a project and they want like they've never done that before like maybe they don't really quite understand like the how you know the psychology behind implementing metrics and measuring things so i don't know maybe that's maybe again yeah like you said kevin it's kind of out of our our scope but um i don't know it might be kind of interesting to provide some kind of guidance for folks well, it's it's definitely important to share our intent when we when we're creating this metrics right and I think we do that through the objectives right so 
we share our intent. And when we're creating these metrics, we're creating them for, for positive reasons. So if they're being used to, if they're being used in other ways, that would, that was not our intent. Yeah. Matt just dropped in the chat. What about a chaos book club, the tyranny of metrics by Jerry Z Muller. And I think that, Maybe we just have a thing of like recommended reading or, you know, something like that. That's just like a general kind of like, hey, if you're going to get into this world and you don't have any experience at all, here's a good place to start um, before you kind of try to implement and change all the things and move all the levers and <laughs> affect everything in your community. Here's some good places to start references. I like that. I like that chaos book club. I would do it. It's probably a good book to read, to be honest with you. I've never read it. Um, and it would probably be a great book for us to read to understand what the, the bounds are and how we talk about metrics. That would be great. I mean, I know like our job isn't necessarily to teach everyone about all the things <laughs> all the time, but um, I don't know. I mean, if people are coming to us as, you know, the metrics place, and this is where the, you know, the conversations happen, I mean, it might be nice to have that little extra of like pointing them to things or, or opening it up to anybody who wants to join our book club. If we do do a book club, it'd be fun. I sort of love the idea of a book club. <laughs> like not a regular one but like i don't know maybe every couple of months we give like 10 minutes to talk about a book but like i'm already thinking about a couple that i've crossed my desk that i really for anyone who works in the data and analytical space i think like data feminism i really liked and also just like like things like that that would be awesome to talk about in this space that are related data and analysis problems space is big so I don't know, I kind of like it. Um, not that we want to start one right now, but. I was, I was just going to say, if we have someone that is super passionate about it and wants to take that idea and run with it, like I am a thousand percent behind it. I'm looking at a way to make sure the book would be freely available to everybody. So anybody could join. So I was just looking up anyway, I'll, I could look at that. Okay, I'm going to put an action item for you, Matt. Oops. Did I not spell that right? Oh, the available. Sorry, Grammarly. All right, so we'll see how that goes. Do you want to, we'll just talk about it again next week and we'll just see how it goes. I love it. I feel like there we've talked about a book club in the past, but it's been a long time. And I don't remember it being something relatable. It was something like random that we were somebody read a good book that was like fiction or something, I think. And we were like, oh, we should do a book club. But then it promptly died that idea. <laughs> but this would be really applicable, I think, to us. And if we could, you know, have it available to everybody, it'd be great. Okay, hi Matt. You could check um, Z Library. I think uh, at Z Library, all books are available for everyone. So that could help. Yeah, I'll definitely do that. And I'll, I was seeing if there was like a digital version of it as well. Yeah, there is. It has an app. So if you just download the app, I feel like there is really all books are there. So that might help. Yeah, yeah. So you can just download the PDF EPUB from Z Library. Right on. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Pisayo. Um. Okay. I think we have about eight minutes left. Uh, Matt, did you put this in here? About I, the, you know? I just okay. wanted to put this out there for folks that coming out of the metrics model working group. I had put this in general as well. That um, we're looking at at ways to kind of connect two repositories, two different repositories in two different orgs, such that if a metric model changes, the markdown changes on a metric model, it will trigger an action to post an issue. 
in that other repository in another org so that they know that there's a change in a metric model. This came from the Compass community that has the Compass software, and they've been deploying a lot of the chaos metric models. And it's just, you get the idea. Just they want to know if something changes in a model, particularly if there's a new metric added or a metric deleted. Um, and then there was a response. There were a couple of responses that indicated that this does seem like it's possible. And that link right there is a link to the metrics model channel where Venu has kind of raised the question. And if you would like to participate in kind of working on this, um, I just wanted to bring this forward for folks. I think that would be super, super helpful. And there might be other applications too, where um, if a, a change happens in a metric, maybe the metric model needs to know also, I don't know. Yep. But that would be really cool if Venom could figure that out or if we have a team of folks to work on that, that'd be awesome. Is that, do you know, I haven't looked at the thread, um, but do you know if that's something that just happens in GitHub or like- It looked, you... it looked like there was a tool that somebody okay. had that would, it, basically the action would trigger this tool. Gotcha. Somebody was written and then that would take care of the okay because i was just thinking does somebody have to write this from scratch like that no. seems like a lot okay then it pointed to a, a, a different github repo where it looks like there's some prior code written awesome yeah that'd be cool okay we got six minutes anything else on people's minds All good with me. Going once, going twice. All right. Well, I hope you all have a really good day and um, we'll see you here same time next week with smiles on our faces, ready to uh, to hang out. See you later, everybody. Hey, everybody. Bye. Bye.